Hi everyone, I'm Shruti Sanadia. I'm a software engineer in Facebook connectivity working on Magma 4G, 5G core development. Hi everyone, uh, this is Ulash Kozat. Uh, like Shruti, I am also part of the Facebook connectivity team working on the Magma project. So today Ulash and I are going to talk about Magma. As a lot of you might already know, it's an open source project that started with a 4G use case added career Wi-Fi support and is now progressing towards 5G. So in today's talk, we will briefly introduce Magma and then deep dive into two key activities of 2020, the Magma OAI converged MME and the 4G, 5G converged core. Let's start with the Magma introduction. Uh, Magma's mission is quite aligned with uh, Facebook Connectivity's mission. Uh, we want to bring more people online uh, and we do it by providing uh, service providers uh, a powerful platform uh, that they can use uh, you know, uh, to provide wireless access. Um, our platform is built on top of four pillars. Uh, openness is the first pillar. It is open software, uh, the license is free, uh, and anyone can contribute. The second pillar, it is quite flexible. Uh, we can handle different deployment scenarios. Uh, we can do greenfield deployments with code complete and new use cases, or we can do brownfield uh, deployments where there are a lot of legacy systems. The third pillar is Magma is very extensible. Uh, the microservices architecture is built in. Uh, you can add your own services, you can extend the existing services, and you can define new integration points easily. And last but not least, uh, our fourth pillar is the reliability. Magma, uh, a lot of use cases of Magma has rural access with very limited uh, technician access. So from the get-go, it is designed to be very reliable and it goes through various testing stages to ensure that. When we look at the Magma architecture features, uh, we can easily see distinguish three different layers. At the bottom of this layer, we have access gateway uh, that integrates multiple radio access technologies and it provides a local breakout service to the internet or to your uh, local edge cloud. So the Magma architecture with this uh, access gateway, highly distributed access gateway deployments is edge ready today. When we go up to the stack, we have orchestrator and NMS. Orchestrator layer provides RESTful APIs for OSS PSS layers uh, through which uh, the access gateway functions can be configured remotely, the services life cycles can be managed, and the data collection and visualization can be done easily. The third component, Federation Gateway, uh, enables us to integrate Magma uh, over the standard interfaces with the mobile network operators core functions in terms of policy management, charging, and others. And Magma started as an incubation project under Facebook connectivity, but now it has expanded into an open source project with its own neutral repository and expanded the ecosystem beyond Facebook connectivity uh, with OAI being one of the key contributors amongst the others listed here. And the the repository is quite active. It, it averages around 50 to 100 weekly commits to the Magma master branch. And in addition to contributions, we also see a lot of use where if the next chart shows the number of unique clones of the repository in a 13 day snapshot on a, in October this year. And as you see, there were 750 unique clones of the repository, uh, which is almost 20 times the number of active contributors showing that a lot of people are using testing building on top of magma so let me deep dive deep dive into the first activity of this year which is magma oai converged mme what exactly so oai and magma have a long shared past uh, magma mme service started by forking from the open air cn 
project in 2016 and continued syncing changes upstream until 2017. Since then, the two projects diverged in their development and early this year, the two teams got together to uh, kick off a converged MME plan to unify the developer community. So what exactly is the converged MME? Well, it's a unified service that consolidates functionality from both the open source code bases. Uh, as you see here, Magma consists of uh, several services, one of which is MME, which, can, which becomes a common network function across both Magma and OAI EPCs. Uh, we envision three key areas of convergence, one being the SXA interface, where the MME supports both free diameter as well as gRPC to speak with open air HSS and subscriber DB. And another one is S11 abstraction, where the Converge MME supports S11 over GTP V2C with standards compliant CUPS SD gateway, and also a gRPC interface towards non-standard session and IP management services. Additionally, OpenAir MME already supports release 15, which is essential for 5G non-standalone support, and we included that on the roadmap. In addition to development, we also agreed upon a testing framework, which would instantiate different configurations of these uh, interfaces to, uh, to have two versions of the EPC, which can be tested for end-to-end -end integration through standard UE eNode B simulators. And every incoming patch is tested on this to allow for continuous integration and um, making sure the code is healthy. So how far have we progressed? Um, since the kick of this uh, earlier this year, S6A abstraction was added in Q1, and I would like to give a shout out to Lionel from OAI team for that effort. In Q2, Rafael from OAI team uh, set up the Jenkins CI to test the different EPC configuration. And Mohit spearheaded the S11 abstraction. And these additions enabled us to launch the Magma neutral repo to continuously support both the developer communities. And we are focusing on adding the release 15 support by the end of this year. With that, I would let Olash deep dive into the 4G, 5G Converge code. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, if when we look at the 5G adventure for Magma, it really started with the uh, TIP uh, OCEAN Group's establishment. TIP OCEAN Group uh, defined uh, three different work streams, application and services, orchestration and automation. And the relationship with Magma is this working group, this project groups uh, define requirements and Magma provides a reference implementation. When we look at the timeline uh, of the activities, the project group formation happened early this year. Uh, and by mid-year, uh, a minimum viable core scope is finalized. And that uh, MVC scope uh, involves 5G fixed wireless access service. Based on that, uh, required architecture needs to provide N1, N2, N3, and N6 interface support. Uh, currently, uh, a lot of these functions are uh, implemented and we are at the stage of integration testing and bug fixing. Uh, we are hoping that we will be able to do a lab demo at the end of uh, this month. And uh, in January, the version 1.4 of Magma will include this MVC scope of 5G. We have not, we don't have much time uh, to do a, a very detailed description. Uh, I just basically want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, tell you how uh, the 4G, 5G Converge Core architecture looks like. Um, we don't design this from scratch. We take advantage of Magma's existing uh, microservices architecture. We have a few touch points uh, on the SCTP termination point. Uh, on the decoding all the messages uh, through the NGAP and some uh, of the you know 5G message handling that needs to be done with the 5G NAS functionality, and we need some additions on the session management and uh, user management. 
And these touch points are shown in this picture with those uh, green uh, labeled boxes, green colored boxes. As you can see, there are a lot of other services uh, that basically run in parallel, and many of these services are shared across both 4G and 5G use cases. So this talk touches the tip of the iceberg. Uh, please join us on the journey. You can learn more about Magma from the website. Uh, check out the code on GitHub. Join the discussion on Slack and stay tuned for our developers conference coming up in Q1 2021. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.